and we are live good morning happy saturday morning if you are watching this live here on my page on facebook my sweet home living or you may be watching this on the replay over on youtube later today either way i hope that you'll let me know that you are here today i'm so excited about today's project and we are part of a two-day weekend marathon called the vintage and thrifted diy marathon fall special welcome on into my sweet home living my name is tracy campbell please do let me know if you are here where you're tuning in from and also if you are new to my page i would love to know that as well hop on in here we have an amazing project beginning today um, or for today our event is starting today and continuing all the way through tomorrow night if you love all things vintage thrifted rustic primitive this will be the place you want to be this weekend let me show you what we are going to be um, doing this morning good morning michelle and dana and sue thank you all for hopping on this morning um okay miss patty no problem i just want to make sure that you guys can hear me okay though because facebook has been a little glitchy this morning already so i want to make sure that we're all in uh working order <laughs> good morning miss emma and ann tanya thank you all for tuning in i'm not going to spend a lot of time chit chatting because we have a fabulous project that we're going to hop to this morning and um this event this weekend is really special in the sense that it's all things themed around vintage and thrifted type projects and so um last night we did a pre-event kickoff if you see my little tobacco stick tree over here i did kind of revamp the star at the top still needs a little work at the top but that is our tobacco stick tree i used actually they were actually i guess antiques because they're probably more than 100 years old uh tobacco sticks from my family farm and created a really cute fall tree for my home decor that i can change out for the seasons if you missed that i have the replay on my page my sweet home living and you can also find it in the event group called all things vintage and thrifted if uh, you want to catch the event the link is in my video description where you can watch all the amazing creators and we have two live sales going on this weekend as well both at 6 30 p.m central both evenings today and tomorrow so you won't want to miss that either so let's hop into it let's hop into it i can't wait to show you what we're doing today something really simple and it's it's kind of fall themed in a sense that um it's not going to have your typical fall decorating uh decorations on it however it's something that um was done more in the fall and winter months during primitive days um and we're all working with fabric scraps today fabric scraps if you have fabric scraps this project is going to be something that you will love something very simple that you can put together you can use different colors to create a different kind of theme but we're also repurposing repurposing a jar you guys <laughs> this time i think this is an old uh, jalapeno jar and actually it still has the labels intact but i'm not going to worry about that too much i'm going to kind of uh, embellish the back and the front uh, throughout the process so you won't even be able to see that but we can always remove it later as well we're repurposing this and making it into a collection jar along with some rag balls now that's probably not your idea of fall decorating however during primitive days let's just say that you know during the fall and winter months that was when the ladies of the home uh, spent more time making things involving fabrics and materials whether it was rag quilts or clothing for their families that was when they started using more of their materials because during the summer and the spring months they were spent um you know canning and preserving things like that um, or tending to things outside of the home or cleaning uh, but during the fall and winter months when you hunker down you get those fabric scraps out and that was during the time that they would start creating rag quilts um, and clothing items and so there were uh, fabric scraps more readily available uh, and they saved them during that time now these collection jars collection jars come with the idea of any kind of primitive style decorating was very simplistic in the sense that they used things that they had for everyday purposes. I'm painting the jar lid, by the way, if you're wondering. <laughs> I'm just giving it a quick coat of some um, off-white chalk paint, and we're going to grunge that up and make it look good and rusty. <laughs> but collection jars were something that they could add to the decor of their home using items that they were practical, like fabric scraps. And so they would take these little remnants of fabrics that they um, would have and they stored them in jars or bowls or things like that. And um, 
that would be also serve as home decor during those primitive times. Now, I'm not seeing that I am being shared over into that group. Goodness gracious, yes we are. <laughs> I just wanna make sure that all of our watchers can find us if they are looking for us. We, um, all of the videos and events are going to be posted into the DIY Vintage and uh, Thrifted group. So uh, if you want to know where that group is, the video description is uh, does have that link for you. All right, I've given this a quick coat of white, off-white chalk paint, you guys, and I think it's gonna work perfect. Now, let's move on to the next step. And while that paint is still kind of wet and tacky, I'm gonna sprinkle on some cinnamon. You know how funny this is, is because if you're, no matter if you're watching on, what kind of a device you're watching, um, different devices have different um, looks to them. <laughs> so that's so strange because on, um, you know, one page it doesn't show up and the other page it does. So I just wanna make sure that we're all in the same place here, um, that people can find us. We're just trying to make it easy. Just trying to make it easy. And um, technology is kind of making it hard this morning. We had some technical difficulties with our first presenter. Bless Miss Pat's heart. She is running into technical difficulties, but she pulled it together. And um, I know she'll be back with more details on her project. And she always is good about posting photos as well. So I've sprinkled this jar lid. Woo, let me tilt this down so you guys can see what we're doing. <laughs> good morning, good morning, Miss Francis. Good morning, Miss Teresa, how are you? All right, okay, went a little overboard there. All right, I have just sprinkled a little bit of instant coffee and cinnamon right on top of that paint, you guys. And then I'm gonna layer on a little bit of Mod Podge right on top of that paint. And you're gonna watch the magic of the grunge take place, you guys. This is actually more, it's, it's a mix between grub and grungy. Um, grubby, I think, is a little has a little more texture to it, is what I like to call it anyway. Um, and grunge is more of a coloring, more of a staining technique. But now this, I'm trying to do grubby. Whew. And my Mod Podge and my coffee is not wanting to activate this morning. Come on, get it together. I just want this jar lid to look good and old, you guys. If you are not familiar with my kind of style, <laughs> if it's not old, I make it look old. Oh, you couldn't get on the link. Um, I'll check that out. If the link I do have, hopefully in my video description is working. If not, we'll see. Let me test it. Yeah, the link that I have in my actual video description is working. So um, if nothing else works, click that video description and that will have the group link that you can find. When all else fails, pour Mod Podge onto your surface. <laughs> That's what we're going with. We don't have time to mess around this morning. We gotta get with it. All right, now it's gonna look pretty goopy and really, really kind of um, suspect for a little bit. That's okay. Um, you kind of want that coffee to kind of marry with the Mod Podge and do its thing. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer. You know, sometimes it's not love at first sight, but <laughs> it, it, will, it will do. It will do it. The more Mod Podge you have on there, the better because it kind of, that moisture kind of serves as an activator for that coffee. And I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit more. And I'm going to crumble some of these little crystals up a little bit so that they're finer and that will kind of speed along the process as well. Now, we're gonna turn a little bit of heat on that lid and we're gonna let it kind of dry while we proceed to the next step. And we will have this all wrapped up in about 20 minutes, you guys. <laughs> we are sailing right along here. Let's put the lid on um, our substances, so I don't wanna create a mess this way. <laughs> Newbie from Iowa, welcome Miss Jane to my page. My page is My Sweet Home Living. My name is Tracy Campbell. So excited that you were here and hopefully you're here for the two day weekend event called the Vintage and Thrifted Marathon. So excited. Thank you, Miss Debbie. I know my style's not for everyone, you guys. I know not everyone likes things, I don't know, old, worn, whatever. Um, but 
if you're here for the event, I think you kind of like this kind of style somewhat. It's just, I don't know, it's just what I like, you guys. You can kind of take this same little style, though, and kind of create it your own, make it your own with a little bit of tweaks. Uh, so it's not anything too complicated. Now, what I'm going to use next, let me show you. Let me pull these out. We're going to use some styrofoam balls. Nothing fancier than that, right? <laughs> super, super uh, easy to use. So I've pulled a couple of these out, and I'm going to show you what I do. If you have scrap fabrics, then this project is perfect for you. If you want to kind of have a color coordinated design, then you might want to be a little bit pickier and choosier about your fabrics that you use. So as you can see, I've just kind of pulled out some fabrics that I know kind of coordinate together. And if they're not quite all grungy enough for me, never fear, because we can always pull out the good old trusty coffee grunge mix. <laughs> and we can grunge up these materials and kind of give them all the same little look to them, the same little patina to them uh, using that coffee grunge. So here's what I have done. Let me show you how I do this. And you probably already know, and if not, then you can see it as well while we're here. Let me scoot this jar to the side because I don't need that right this second. Um, you're going to just take a piece of your fabric, okay? You're going to cut some little notches in the ends. And I'm going about, the smaller your styrofoam ball, the smaller, the more narrow your strips need to be. The bigger the ball that you have, the wider strip that you will need, obviously, okay? So I'm just going to cut some little strips. I don't know, maybe a half inch wide. I don't know. I don't have my measuring tape with me out here this morning. I'm just going to cut several strips, okay? And we're going to rip them because ripping them gives you that tattered look, okay? Got to be careful with my dryer here. I don't want to overheat it. <laughs> Cover it up with my fabric here. That would be bad news. Um, just take it and, and it will rip right along the the thread lines, okay, of that material. Now here's what happens. When you do that, you get these tattered, raveled edges, okay, just like so. You can see on that edge right there. Now you will get some threads that will kind of peel off, but guess what? We're okay with that. It's kind of like wrinkles when you decoupage. Um, if you like rustic and vintage, that's okay. You welcome those kinds of things because it gives it more character. So if it curls up on you, just take your finger, run it down, spread it back out, okay? Now, this is a pretty long strip, and I could almost probably get two, two out of that one. So let's go back to the end, and let's do one more rip, and then I'll kind of show you um, the other colors that I have. I'm going with just a... Uh, I'm kind of using some fabrics that I had handy, honestly, and they're kind of fall falling into that... Uh, Americana kind of look honestly uh, but you could take in you could do some reds and greens for the holidays um, if you wanted to do something more for fall you could do golds and oranges you know the sky's the limit honestly you can just use whatever you have um, or you can be a little more selective about your fabrics and I've got some thread hanging on to me all right so then what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take this fabric strip where did my glue gun go? <laughs> it's right under here, <laughs> right under my nose, literally. <laughs> Hello, Miss Diane. Hello, Miss Mary. How are you? Um, so then you're going to take these little styrofoam ball spheres, whatever you want to call them. We're just letting our lid do its thing right there while we um, continue to finish the project. And then that lid will be finished in just a little bit. All right, so you're going to take the end of that fabric strip. Put a little bit of glue on it and my glue gun is being quite cantankerous this morning <laughs> i mean i wouldn't expect it to be any other way <laughs> would you we wouldn't expect it to cooperate i'm gonna be getting me a new one this weekend you bet your bottom dollar i'm getting me a new glue gun we have 300 watchers i'm so excited thank you all so much for sprinkling us out and um letting your friends know whoo that one's much better all right we're back in business all right sometimes if your glue is a little too hot it can melt the styrofoam okay just gonna wrap 
that's all you do guys you take it and you wrap it overlap it and then you will see these beautiful little ragged edges come to life as you're wrapping it's so much fun it's so simple but yet so cute and it falls right into that primitive vintage style of decorating okay not in so much in the sense of antique wise but um, definitely reminds you of primitive more vintage days of living okay so um and i love that about it now the more you wrap obviously the more um the little tattered edges will be visible and a little bit more character your little uh, shape will have okay so let's turn this off for a minute all right so if I draw that too quick, some of my coffee won't uh, melt into the Mod Podge. So we'll let it finish its thing while I show you how I make these little rag balls. They're so simple, you guys. Now, obviously, you could go with different shapes and sizes. If you have a very large jar, I would encourage you to do a couple of different sizes just for interest. Um, just like creating little vignettes and displays, you want to use different shapes or not shapes, but different sizes to create interest. So let me show you what I've already kind of whipped up. Um, I've used some of the, some coordinating fabrics and I've just rolled those up and I have some of the same color schemes to them, okay? Now these are so cute, tucked in a little um, dough bowl, as little bowl fillers, okay? Um, but we're gonna create them as jar fillers today. <laughs> because how many of you, just let me ask you this, how many of you, have found jars of buttons in your grandmother's uh, stash and your mother's stash, uh, jars of spools or collections of uh, threads and uh, different things like that. Those were big things. Collections of vintage things uh, were, were popular and that's just it was just their way of decorating and keeping up at the same. It was practical yet decorative. Let's just say it that way. Practical yet decorative ways of decorating. Thank you, Miss Debbie. I think they're adorable and they're sweet. And you can change them out for the seasons. You can make a whole little set just for each season, you guys. And um, so if you created a project and you had some leftover material but not quite enough to finish your project, this would be perfect. This would be perfect. Um, and so depending on the size of your jar, you want to make sure that your little spheres are large enough that they'll fit down in your jar, okay? Um, like this one right here is way too big. <laughs> um, look there. Way too big to fit down in that jar. Uh, so you kind of have to mix and match. These, I think these are, I don't know what size these are, but they would fit and it would give me a little bit different um, size interest. So, um, I don't know if we'll do more than one size today because I want to kind of get this jar embellished and show you how we tie this all together. And um, think of jars as a great way to display things, you guys. And that's um, because that was so popular with, if with primitive style decorating is, is things, uh, collections. Um, you know, if you start collecting things, vintage scales, um, collecting the wooden spools, uh, a lot of people like to collect vintage spoons. Um, the sky's the limit. Yellow, you know, stoneware. Uh, there are people that like to collect that. So you can think of outside of the box when it comes to collecting things. But if you pull it all together and put it in a little, jo a little jar, you've got a little mini vignette already created and, and made up. Whoa, that's hot, guys. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> all right. So here's our jar. Now ignore the label that I have on the back. I am going to use a little bit of a filler, and I haven't quite decided. I could use some um, uh, Excelsior, which is like a lighter color, or I could use a little bit of like, uh, what is this? I keep wanting to, this is Spanish moss. I could use a little bit of Spanish moss, and I think that's what I'm going to use because, only because, let me show you, it kind of ties in to my color tones a little bit better, okay? And that'll kind of just fill in between the gaps of those little rag balls and um, just give another texture. I'm going to cut that because it's not going to pull apart. <laughs> it's not going to collaborate. We're going to cut it. All right. I don't need a ton, but I do want to have some handy 
to just pull out. I'm going to start by putting a little bit in the bottom. And it's going to kind of be like a little layering. All right. All right. There we go. Now, then you're just going to toss. Start tossing these in. And this, you're going to see it fill up really cute. Now, oh, I wanted to show you guys something. Real quick. The coffee grunge mix you guys that you know I've been using like crazy if you have some material you don't have the time to st coffee stain a large batch of fabric here's what you can do take a little bit of your coffee grunge mix good old trusty coffee grunge mix I already have some poured into a little bowl right here and all I'm gonna do I'm gonna shake and get my brush a little wet and then I'm gonna kind of um, get some of the excess out take it and brush it right over that you guys now it's going to look, it's going to darken it quite a bit. Now mine is a little heavy on the cinnamon because this is the bottom of a batch. And so a lot of times the cinnamon settles to the bottom. Um, but this will give it an amazing smell too. If you're using these in dough bowls and you want that fragrance of cinnamon, vanilla, and coffee, it's a subtle uh, fragrance. So it's not anything overpowering, but there you go. You've got it all vintaged up. Now mine is really dark because it does, it's heavy on cinnamon. <laughs> the cinnamon settles to the bottom um, of your jar and that is the bottom of a jar. So it has a little more cinnamon in it, which is why it's a little darker. But once it dries, it will lighten some, but it will still have that good coffee grunged look. Okay, we're gonna let that dry. Um, and I'm not gonna put that one in our jar right now, obviously because it's wet. All right, so let's go ahead and let's continue filling up our jar with the different colors. I think I'm thinking, whoop, that lighting. There we go, I'm filling it up. I think I need just a little bit of filler tossed in there now. Not a whole lot because I don't want it to hide the colors, just enough to kind of fill in some of the gaps. So obviously you can tell the more of these little um, shapes that you have, that one's too big. Um, the more of these little shapes that you have, the more it will fill up your jar. My lighting, oh yeah. Okay, let's turn these around a little bit. So you can choose to leave the um, moss out if you want. If you want to just highlight the little wrap on, my hands got against that. <laughs> um, but that, those, just putting in there like that. Now, ignore that silly label. I wish I could have gotten that off this morning, but it was being stubborn and I didn't have time to, <laughs> didn't have time to fight with it <laughs> so now what we're gonna do we've got about six minutes left I want to try a little rag ball with some cheesecloth on it I've got some coffee grunged um, cheesecloth I just soaked this in uh, some co really dark coffee water and uh, hang it to dry yeah I like that I've never created little rag balls with the um, with this Although I do need to make sure that I keep enough for my top. I gotta have a little little bit of embellishment uh, left left for my uh, cheesecloth left for my little embellishments here. All right. That's cute. That is cute. Something just rustic and so simple. All right. Now I'm gonna put a little bit of hot glue on there. And where the scissors go? All right, Ooh, that's still a little warm under there. Simple little cheesecloth fabric ball. Toss that in there. Let's do one more. Let's see. I need a I need a dark one. I'm gonna use some of this just navy blue. I think. Ooh, let's put that back on our little ball there. Um. I'm going to wrap this one and then we'll finish this up and embellish our little jar. The next creator that's coming up next is Miss Jennifer from Home Sweet Create. I know that you will be excited to see her. She makes some of the cutest things, you guys. Cutest things. Um, so you'll want to head over to the group that I have linked in the description so that you can catch all 49 presenters this weekend you guys and we have two live vintage item sales so if you have trouble finding vintage items for your home decor then you'll want to check out those vintage sales um 
both evenings, today and tomorrow at 6.30 Central. Uh, we have some ladies that have some vintage items for sale, so they'll be live here in our group. So, so excited with about that. All right, we're filling it up, you guys. We're filling it up. Now, I think I might have a little bit too much moss right there, so I might have to go back in and take some of that out in a minute. Um, and let's get some heat on this uh, matter here. It's taking its sweet time this morning. Taking its sweet time. Time. I know we don't have a whole lot of time. So while that is sitting on there just a little bit longer, I'm going to get my uh, label ready. I have a little hang tag, a little bitty hang tag. And all I'm going to write on here, I think I'm going to write rag balls and then maybe five cents. <laughs> just so that it looks, I don't know, something cute. Um, you, this is totally optional. Just gives it a little more character. You could use a printable tag or uh, make your own. Today we're going for simple. Going for simple and we're just going to hand write our own hang tag. And then I'm going to show you how I make it look a little more vintage. We're not using coffee grunge though this time. Alright, so we have that written on there. That's backwards. I didn't turn my camera around. I'm going to take my good old trusty. Let me show you. Whoa, we got bubble action going on there. <laughs> Distressed Oxide Ink. Actually, this is just Distressed Ink. And, um, oh, that's not going to work either. And, um, go around. Tell you what. It's early. <laughs> it's early for me. My brain is just not functioning this morning. Good morning. Good morning, Miss Linda. How are you, sweet friend? Uh, I'm going to take that and ink it up. Go around the edges because that's where you would have more tattered look to it. And I don't know if you guys have any fabric scraps that could have possibly belonged to your mother or grandmother or someone in your family that you may be able to use this um, project idea with but um, it's definitely the time of the year fall winter when we start spending more times indoors and um, just as in up it tell me I got two minutes left you guys two minutes so miss Jennifer will be hopping right on up after me we're gonna tie this little tag on at the top and I'm going to use just a little strip of um, cheesecloth. I want to make sure that you guys can see Miss Jennifer when she starts uh, from Home Sweet Create. I've got a little strip of this. I'm going to tie it around the top and we're going to finish it off with our little lid at the top. And then you can add this to your jar collection, you guys. How cute is that going to be? We're going to double wrap that, I think. Yes, yeah, so cute. Okay. Give that a little tie at the top. Tie it right there. Is our lid touchable? I think it is. I'm going to have to do a little bit more work on that lid, you guys. <laughs> There's a cute little idea that you can use to display your little vintage primitive style little rag balls. Hope that you've enjoyed today's project. I hope that you enjoy the rest of the today's event and tomorrow. Stay tuned. Our next creator is coming up next. Thank you so much. If you leave a, a like and a follow uh, on my page before you leave me today, if this is your style of decorating, and I'll see you again soon. Thanks so much and have a wonderful day.